How many people out there have heard of a country known as Czechoslovakia, or better yet, the Czech Republic? I can probably answer this for you, not many. My dad's side of the family originated from there as recently as my grandfather. Today I'll be covering the basic Czech art periods. I have studied art history for the past two years and enjoy being able to share this special part with you. I will be going over periods of Czech art from its beginning to its most recent, including Gothic, Baroque, 19th century, and 20th century. The Gothic art period spanned from 1285 to 1344. This was the first time that Czech art was ever recognized. Prague, the capital of Czech Republic, had just been made the center of the Holy Roman Empire, and Master Theodoric was one of the first recognized painters from this area. He was commissioned to paint panels for the inside of the Karl Jason Castle, 129 in all. The panels consisted of popes, angels, and prophets. His style is recognized for his usage of bold lines and also for the usage of painting important figures into a small frame. This was one of the panel panels that he painted for the castle. And you can see the usage of bold lines and the staff and then the pope is very large painted but in a very small frame. The Baroque period lasted from 1600 to 1750. Peter Brandel was an infamous painter during these times, but sadly he was not known to the world for a long time after due to the isolation behind the Iron Wall. He was popular for using his style of impasto, chiaroscuro, and dramatic figures. He mainly worked on biblical images due to their popularity. And here you can see an example. This is actually a self-portrait he did of himself painting a biblical image. And you can see the dramatic usage in his face. And also chiaroscuro is basically grayscale. You can see how dark it is, how much grayscale that he did use. The 19th century was a huge boost in art popularity. It was now found being used in more of a commercial sense. But most popular during this time was the artist Alphonse Mucha. He was liked for his Art Nouveau style of painting. He was so popular that in 1920 his designs were chosen to decorate the Czech Republic bills. I have an example of that. And you can tell how differently the style had changed. The amount of detail that was put into this bill was just phenomenal. Despite this, he personally felt that his masterpiece did not come until 1928, the Slav Empire. This consisted of 20 massive paintings depicting the history and culture of the native Czechs. It has been on display at the Velterin's Palace ever since. Lastly, 20th century art had become completely modernized. Styles like Cubism, Symbolism, and Expressionism had become popular. Cubism had become so popular that, in fact, Prague was often considered the city of Cubism. One of the artists most famous for this method was Bumil Kubista. His earlier works were influenced by artists like Van Gogh and Cezanne, but later on in his life, his self-expression grew and allowed him to make many unique pieces, such as Still Life of a Skull, which shows his best use of Cubism and Expressionism. This is his Still Life of a Skull. You can see the skull right here, and you can see that it has signs of cubism, but how he altered it in his way by using his self-expressionism. I hope this essay has taught you a little bit about an unknown country, one that is very close to my heart. I hope that you have come to see some of this beautiful artwork that has stemmed from my family's homeland.